In this section, we're going to talk about what we call the uh, real and complex zeros of a polynomial function. In order to find those things, we're going to use the process of division. We're going to use what we call polynomial division. And there's two types of polynomial division that we're going to deal with. It's what's called long division and synthetic division. And just like in the regular type of division that you know, the long division you know, we use the exact same uh, process. All right. And for this particular process, here's what we have. Um, they're asking me, how would I divide 3,983 by 26 using long division? Well, before we start, let's get these formal terms in terms of what we're talking about when we talk about division. So the number that is on the outside out here is called the divisor. The number on the inside is called the dividend. And we're going to try to find the quotient, right? So to do that, remember what we do? We say, how many times will 26 go into uh, three, it can't, so you go to the next one, 39. 26 going to 39, one time. And then so we do one times, whatever goes up here, we multiply it by this over here. So that's one times 26, which is 26. And remember, we subtract here next. So we do 39 minus 26, and that'll be 13. And then we bring these numbers down. So we're going to bring these numbers down now, all right? And so we'll put an 8 here, and we'll say, how many times will 26 go into 138? So 26 will go into 138 five times. And so we'll do 5 times 26, and that's equal to 130. And again, same process, we'll subtract. And then we'll go right here, and we'll bring the next one down. And then we'll say, how many times will... 26 go into 83 and so 26 will go into 83 three times and we do three times 26 and that's equal to 78 and again we'll subtract that and so 83 minus 78 is equal to just 5 and now, because 26 can't go into 5, and this was left over, this 5, this 5 down here, is what we call our remainder. So just like that process of long division in general, we're going to use this exact same process to do what we call polynomial division. And here's how we do this. So you're going to arrange the terms in... in what we call ascend, uh, descending powers. And descending means you're going from the biggest to the greatest. I mean, the biggest to the smallest, in both the dividend and the divisor. Divide the first term and the dividend by the first term and the divisor. So the only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna focus on that first term. And then we're gonna multiply the first term of the divisor By the first term in the quotient, you're going to go through and subtract the product and then bring down the next step and repeat this process. So here's how this works. We'll take this right here is the dividend. And this right here is my divisor. So on the outside, I have x plus 3. I'm going to divide that by x squared plus 10x plus 21. And here's what I'm doing. I'm solely going to focus on this number right here, the highest exponent of the thing. And I essentially want to make it, I want to know what do I have to multiply x by to make it look like an x squared? Well, to make this x right here look like an x squared, I need to multiply it by an x. And remember, if it goes up here in the quotient, it needs to be multiplied by the divisor. So I'm going to multiply x by x. That is x squared. I'm going to multiply x by 3. And that is 3x. And again, all I focused on was this first term. I don't care about this term back here until I start to multiply. So now the next step is to subtract. Well, when you subtract, you're just going to change all the signs here. So that becomes a minus. That becomes a minus. I like to circle my signs to show that I'm changing them. 
So here, this is going to cancel. 10x minus 3x is 7x. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this down. And we're going to repeat that process. How do I make an x look like a 7x? But what do I need to multiply the x by to make it a 7x? Well, there needs to be a positive 7. And when I do that, I get 7 times x is 7x. And I get 7 times 3. That is a positive 21. Now, here, I'm going to change the sign. So I'll subtract minus, minus. I'll circle them so I know I'm changing my signs. Cancels, cancels. Your remainder here is 0. So your answer or the quotient is just x plus 7. So look at this next one. This right here is the dividend. And this right here is the divisor. So on the outside, I have 2x minus 1. I'm going to divide that by. And now for this, remember, you need to order it in descending order or standard form. So my largest term needs to come first. I need to rewrite this as 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 9. Make sure you put it in standard form or where you're ordering your thing, your terms from smallest, from largest to smallest. And now, again, I'm just going to focus on this term right here, and I want to make this term look like a 4x cubed. So what do I multiply this 2x by to make it a 4x cubed? So I have to multiply that by 2x squared. Because 2x squared times 2x is... 4x cubed, and then 2x squared times the negative 1 is a negative 2x squared. And so what happens now, again, I'm going to change these signs. That becomes a minus. This becomes a plus. And I'm circling the relation. I'm changing them. That goes away. Negative 4x squared plus 2x squared is a negative 2x squared. I'm going to bring this one down. And I'll also bring this down. What do I multiply the 2x by to make it into a negative 2x squared? Well, they're already both 2, so that's going to get them 1. But it needs to be a negative 1 to make it a negative 2x. And then I need another x to make it a x squared. So this will be a negative x. Negative x times 2x is a negative 2x squared. Negative x times a negative 1 is a positive x. And again, changing signs. So this becomes a plus. This becomes a minus. Goes away. 7x minus x is 6x. Bring this down. It's a negative 9. What do I multiply 2x by to make it into a 6x? Well, 2 to a 6 would just be a 3. So that's a plus 3. And now I'm going to multiply 3 times 2x, that is 6x, and then 3 times negative 1, that is a negative 3. And again, I'm going to change my sign, so that's a minus, that becomes a plus, negative 9 plus 3, a negative 6. Here, we can't make a 6 be a 2x, so this is what we call our remainder. And so my quotient here is... 2x squared minus x plus 3. And here's how we write the last part, the remainder. It's minus 6 over the divisor, which is 2x minus 1. You always write the remainder, whatever the sign is, over the divisor. So here is the final solution, the final quotient.